great. And boy, they do it big and they do it right here on Notre Dame Day. We're having so much fun. I'm joined now by Lou Nani, Vice President of University Relations here at University of Notre Dame. Lou, of course, has worked for Notre Dame for 15 years, his last 12 in the current role as VP for University Relations. He graduated from Notre Dame in 1984 and received his master's degree from the university back in 1988. He and his wife, Carmen, live in South Bend with their five children. I'm pleased to introduce my friend, Lou Nani. Lou, so you, good to sure. see you, and, and we've been catching up, yes, as we do great. when we bump into each other. It's wonderful to see you. Tell me about it's Notre great. Dame Day. Why this day? Why is it so meaningful? Oh, it's a great day. We chose April 29th because um, it was in April of 1879. Father Soren, who was 65 years of age, he founded Notre Dame in 1842 when he was in his late 20s. And he was in the port of Montreal about to embark on one of more than 30 trips overseas to, to raise money for this fledgling university in the New World. And fire struck Notre Dame. Uh, the main building burned to the ground. And they were afraid to send a telegram to him because they thought the news might kill him because his life's work had gone up in ashes. So Professor Timothy Howard went out and intercepted him, broke the news to him gently. They returned together. And on this day in 1879, Father Soren came back in probably offered the most sublime words ever spoken at this university. He said, this fire is my fault. We built a university and we named her after the mother of God and she had to burn it down to teach us that we had not dreamed boldly enough. Wow. And so they rebuilt. They saved the university in three months. It was amazing. 80% of the colleges and universities founded before the Civil War did not survive. And Notre Dame was on the precipice of being one of those statistics. But they fought, they rallied together with the help of South Bend and by September, and God knows today we couldn't get construction permits in time <laughs> to get it done. They rebuilt because their survival depended on it. And then Father Soren said, we're gonna put a dome atop this building and the statue of Our Lady, Mary, the Mother of God, because someday, someday this is gonna become one of the great universities in the land and more importantly, one of the greatest forces for good in society and I want everybody to remember why. It will because of, be because of Our Lady on the Dome who's watched over us and guided us every step of the way. Lou, that is so humbling, isn't it? it when really you is. think of the absolute fortitude and yes. the absolute drive and determination of one individual to right. do that, has anyone even come close to Father Soren in that drive and determination since? You know, I'm not sure that there's any one person that you could say who is quite at Soren's level, but. You know, there's a lot of people who have made seminal contributions to, to the life of Notre Dame. We can look to 1919 when uh, Newt Rockne, uh, who was a student and was an assistant chemistry professor, an assistant coach, becomes the head coach because the, 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 uh, his predecessor goes back to farm in Iowa. <laughs> and he goes in from 1919 to 1930, he goes on to lead what is still today the winningest record uh, in the history of intercollegiate football. And what Rockney did that is amazing, they were called the Notre Dame Ramblers. We didn't have a stadium big enough for them to generate revenue at home games. Sure. The Big Ten wouldn't play against us because of Catholic prejudice. And so Rockney took the team to the East Coast and the West Coast and in a pejorative, and not only did they take on the gi Giants of the day, but they beat them. And in a pejorative article in a Det Detroit newspaper, they called them not the Notre Dame Ramblers, but they, in a racial slur, they called them the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And Rockney and his genius, instead of crying foul or filing a lawsuit, he got the guys together and used it as a motivational device and said, you know what? We are nothing but a group of underdogs. We are a group of immigrants, but there's nothing that we cannot accomplish if we work hard enough and we work together. And what they did transcended the gridiron and captured the imagination of an immigrant nation. And these are roots, these are stories that we need to carry forth with us today when we think about our mission and the impact that we need to have in this world. And so important to share this message on Notre Dame Day. Right. And you know, to embrace a slur and then yeah. to take it and look at what it's become now. Exactly. Anyone come close to Newt Rockney since exactly. then? Exactly. Well, you know, you could certainly look at our last three presidents. In some ways, Father Hasberg um, was the second founder of Notre Dame. And then Monk Malloy and Father Jenkins to this day, the, the, the progress, the growth, the impact 
that Notre Dame is having, moving from being a great national university to becoming a great global university uh, through these last three presidents is historic. One of my favorite Father Hasberg stories, though, is, uh, is about a, um, a young Jewish student. Early on in his presidency, a young Jewish student uh, came to campus from Philadelphia, and he was uh, harassed by two of his roommates, and um, he didn't make it through the first semester. He just up and left one day. Father Hesburgh heard about the story and he called the two roommates into his office. He said he let them sit out there for about a half an hour and sort of fester. <laughs> and then he said, uh, he called them in. He said, tell me what happened. They said, oh, he wasn't a good fit for the school. And he said, but did you do this? Did you do this? Did you do this? And it was a Thursday evening and Father Ted said to him, here's how we're going to resolve the situation. I don't care if you have to get on a train and go back to Philadelphia or whatever, but you have till Tuesday. If you do not talk your roommate into coming back to school, the two of you will be permanently suspended with him. Wow. And they got in a train, they found that young Jewish student, they all came back together, and they all graduated from Notre Dame. So in large things and small, Hesburgh brought a Solomonic wisdom to the affairs of Notre Dame, and I think that's carried through Fathers Malloy and Jenkins to this day, and, and it all starts with that golden thread that begins with uh, Father Soren. Well, Lou, what a beautiful story, and uh, who knew that bullying story would uh, turn out so incredibly well yeah. in the end. Yeah. Lou, thank you so much. How, how are you going to be spending the rest of your Notre Dame day? I'm going to really be watching. I, I, this is addicting. If you get on Notre yes. Dame, today.com and you watch these stories are so powerful and I'm oh. uh, even for somebody who's worked here now 15 years I'm learning a lot by by uh, by hanging on that website so. well so good to see you my friend Great to and see you, you take Thank care you. and give my best to your family okay Thank you for everything all right no problem well, now we need to toss it